I want to start today with coronavirus. Let's dive deep into where we are across the economy right now with this absolute mess. We're hearing from a number of big scientists now on this that we didn't properly close down. Dr. Fauci testifying, saying we did not close down at all. The United States barely closed down. And this is why when, when we compare ourselves to Europe and other parts of the world, we have not done as well. He was answering these direct questions. Now the White House is looking to sort of discredit Dr. Fauci right now. The White House says, no, we're not, but they've been leaking documents about Dr. Fauci. So there's this interesting back and forth unfolding right now between what the White House is going to support and not support between Dr. Fauci and other scientists. I don't know. I don't care about that. I can't stand a little poly, you know, political baby. You know, like It's going like a nursery school right now with this kind of stuff. I can't stand that. Just give me the facts. What are the facts? Well, we're now hearing about a troubling new trend with this coronavirus, which is that our immune systems, if we were infected by it, that immunity, those antibodies may wane after just a few weeks. Look at this report. This is incredibly troubling, that immunity to the coronavirus might only last a few months, according to this new study. That means that antibodies in our, once we receive antibodies, once we've been infected by it, and we think we've bounced back from this disease, guess what? Two to three months later, we could be totally free of these antibodies again. Um, so the, the WHO spoke about this yesterday, Dr. Maria Van Kerkhoff, she's one of the doctors at the WHO. She specifically talked about a number of the different studies that have been out around these antibodies. Listen to her. Um, there are some initial studies out of uh, three countries in Europe that are looking at antibody levels over time, suggesting that they may wane after a couple of months. But again, that's early data. And so we really need more studies to better understand this. Um, from our experience with uh, MERS and with SARS-1, uh, the, the virus that um, spilled over in, in 2003, we know that people can have an antibody response for maybe a year or even longer. Um, but with the human coronaviruses, the ones that circulate regularly, it's much shorter than that. So um, it's an incomplete answer because we don't have that answer yet. Um, but there are many scientists that are currently studying this that are trying to get help, help us better understand how long that protection will last. Not good, not good. So the reason I bring this up is because of the vaccine. I haven't seen many people talking about this, but if the vaccine is only supposed to protect us from it for a short amount of time, there's no answers yet to whether or not we could get this thing again two, three months later. Could we be infected that quickly again, right after we are healed from it? And we've already seen a number of cases in the United States where people have been infected and then they overcame it and then they were infected again. And scientists have been baffled by this. But now because they're seeing similarities to SARS and other forms of this SARS virus, that it's showing similarities, that people have been able to be reinfected within a few short months. Troubling. Now that's not what's happening in California. California just did a crap show. We thought that they were on top, right? They were doing really well on lockdown. Gavin Newsom was being praised early on for their response. Now it seems like he's, uh, he's throwing the football and blaming it on the wide receiver right now for dropping the ball because there's been a number of areas, number of cities, number of municipalities who have not done a good job with their response lockdown and they've seen spikes and surges across the state. That forced the governor yesterday to come out and hold a press conference and I saw this news, I said, oh my gosh, <laughs> oh my gosh, I've got family there and this is what he had to say about a new lockdown. Uh, a dimmer switch. Uh, today we are uh, announcing additional statewide actions as it relates to our stay at home order here in the state of California. Uh, we are now effectively, uh, rather effective today, requiring all counties to close their indoor activities, their indoor operations uh, in the following sectors, restaurants, wineries, tasting rooms, movie theaters, family entertainment centers, zoos and museums, card rooms, uh, and uh, the shuttering of all bars. This is in every county in the state of California. Not mincing words there, this is all across the state of California. I mean, you heard the full list of it. I mean, card rooms, I don't even know what that is, card rooms, but salons, gyms, hotels, restaurants, everything. Dine-in, you know, we're supposed to be reopening dine-in restaurants, that's going out the window. Now, the reason this is such a big deal, California, it's a massive economy. On its own, I think it's what, the fifth largest economy in the world? That caused uh, stocks in Europe to uh, freak out a little bit. Um, European stocks 
specifically worried about a new California lockdown. That just goes to show you how much sway California has to the rest of the world. But it's not just California. You've got a massive amount of other hotspots right now. And look at these being bruised red. I love how they describe it as bruised red. That means that there's an uncontrolled spread happening right now across Texas, Florida. Florida this morning, Miami-Dade County has been considered ground zero. The hottest of the hot spots for coronavirus is Miami-Dade County. Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, was heckled yesterday during a press conference for his response to this whole thing. But sure enough, Miami is in, a, is in a world of trouble. But just look all through the South. And scientists are saying it's because of the lack of closing down early and reopening too quickly and from spring breakers, just spending too much time hanging out on the beach and spreading this virus around. Um, but this is not really a second wave. This is really a continuation of the first wave. This is continuing in the same ways. But look at California, look at Nevada. Look at New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas seeing a spike and all of these other red areas. I mean, just because you're in yellow, it just means you're in like caution is warranted. The only areas right now are really New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Vermont and Maine. Well, not even Vermont. I mean, not even Rhode Island. Just a little bit better, but we're not out of the woods on this yet. Um, and that's prompting the U European Union to say, whoa, 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 <laughs> you're not coming in here. We, we're going we're to extend this a little bit further. We do not need people coming into the European Union. We were going to kind of ease, they were going to review everything on the 1st of July, and they were going to look at things a little bit more deeply. Uh, that's not going to happen right now. Um, this is causing a major, a major backlash around the world. And we can't even keep up with the testings right now. So testing is also a major issue. De labs across the country are delayed trying to get answers to people. People are waiting. They think they're sick, but they don't know. They're having to wait seven to 10 days just to get responses. This is a, this is a disaster. This is a disaster right now. So, you know, California's population in, in with 30% of these counties now, 30 counties now having to go under lockdown again, that, that accounts for about 80% of California's population. And of course, this comes on the heels of they barely were able to reopen. Restaurants still can operate with some takeout food and others. Um, you can serve some outside drinks and you can do some outdoor dining. That's about it. But other than that, it's all under lockdown again, which brings me to the question about schools reopening. There's an anxiety right now. I mean, think about how many schools are about to reopen just in a few short weeks. Are you ready to send your kids back to school? Now, this is not a partisan issue because a new poll is out this morning showing it's not just Democrats that don't want to send their kids back to school or who are nervous about it. It's Republicans, too. And that could be bad news for President Trump. President Trump and Betsy DeVos, the White House Edu Edu Education Secretary, who've been pushing for reopening. Well, that could come up against... I mean, you could have families that are Republicans saying, why is the White House forcing my kids to go back to school right now? That could be bad news for re-election numbers. So take a look at this new poll that's out this morning. This is pretty interesting. This is an Axios Ipsos poll, and the anxiety is real among just about everyone. It's higher among Democrats getting back. 62% of Americans, which is a record high, say they're now wearing a face mask whenever they leave the house. Um, you're seeing a rise in the number of Republicans that are saying we need to start wearing face masks. Um, others are saying, look, you can't just wish away or scare away this virus. There's political risks here as well, because if Trump and Republicans uh, for Trump and Republicans, because even if the Republican base sees a risk in putting kids back into the school in the fall, because Republicans do see that seven in 10 American parents overall see it as risky for schools to reopen in the fall. Seven out of 10 parents. Let me know in the comments right now, are you one of those parents? Do you think it's safe to go back? Or, or are you concerned about it? 82% of Democrats, 53% of Republicans say returning to school would be very or moderately risky. Democrats were more likely to see it as a large risk. 89% of black parents saw returning to school as a large or moderate risk compared with 80% of Hispanic parents and 64% of white parents. And gender wasn't really a, a big driver of differences. Um, in California, school officials announced there that they will, uh, that public schools in Los Angeles and San Diego will hold online classes only. 
online classes only. And schools in New York, Governor Cuomo announcing that New York schools will open only if the daily infection rates in the region are below 5% over a 14-day average. Um, he said, we're not going to use our children as guinea pigs. What do you think about that? That's the very latest on coronavirus. Again, take a look at this map. This is incredibly troubling. I uh, hate to be the uh, bearer of bad news with this. But we heard from Dr. Scott Gottlieb yesterday who said that this could continue and we would not likely see a spike in this or a peak for another three weeks. I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel and please don't forget to take advantage of those two free stocks from our friends over at Weeble. If you just go, the link is right here on the screen. You can also go find it in the description below if you go to morrisinvest.com slash Weeble to get those two free stocks just for signing up. I really appreciate you. So, and thank you for so much for subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate you.